In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this dynamic typography animation scene inside of After Effects without using any third party plugins. In this video, we will learn various different techniques to make it look three dimensional. And I know it looks kind of complex, but it is super easy to create, especially when I am teaching you. And before we start this video, make sure to leave a like if you learn something new today and subscribe if you're watching my video for the very first time. With that said, let's jump straight into After Effects and get started. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. Let's call this render as our main render comp. Set the width to 2000 and height to 2500. Frame rate is set to 30 FPS and duration is set to 10 seconds. Click OK. Then create another new comp. This is going to be a text placeholder. So let's call this text. And this time I'm going to change the width and height to 1920 by 1920. Let's select the text tool and then you can type in any text that you want. I'm going to use the monumental extended font, which is a free font. And let's type in something like kinetic typography. So right now the color is set to black. We can switch this to white if we want to just like so. Let's increase the size. Okay, that is looking good. Press control D to duplicate it and hold shift and drag it below like so. And click on the small button that is going to swap the fill and the stroke just like that. And then we can adjust the stroke size. So let's keep it at around five or six or maybe four looks even better. Then select this, press control D to duplicate it. I'll pull this up. Let's bring down the size of the text. And I'm going to type in something like type design. And let's bring this up, press control D, bring this down and let's type in your 2022. All right, I can select everything and align them to the left. So everything is properly aligned up and this is looking very nice. Let's press control Y to create a new solid. I'm going to call this BG for background and we can keep it black. So that is looking pretty nice. Let's right click and create a new adjustment layer called this tint. Go into effects and presets and search for an effect called tint effect. Double click to apply that and swap the colors so we can anytime swap from black and white to well, white and black, if that makes sense. Anyways, you get the idea. I think the stroke is a bit too thin. So I'll select this and let's set this to around five. Okay, so this is the base of our design. Now let's create another new composition. I'm going to call this T underscore rotation underscore zero one. Let's leave it at 1920. Press OK. Drag the text composition inside this. Press R to bring down the rotation properties. And then I'm going to rotate this to minus 90 degrees. Select it, go into effects and presets and search for an effect called motion tile. Double click to apply this. Let's increase the output height of this. So let's bring that up by 1000 and then we can basically get a continuous strip like that. So we can now go ahead and animate this. So make sure to place the time indicator at the very start. Hit P to bring down the position property, create a keyframe. Go all the way up to 10 seconds and let's drag this to the left like so. So now we have a simple movement like this. Now let's go back into our main render composition and drag in the T rotation 01 comp just like so. And then go into effects and presets and search for an effect called CC cylinder. You can double click to apply this. So first I'm going to go into the rotation. Also make sure to click on the small icon to turn on the collapse transformation properties. Let's rotate the X rotation by minus 90 like so. And then we can add a Y rotation of 60 degrees. 
and then go into the rotation order and set this to x y z now select the layer hit s to bring down the scale property and let's set this to around 50 percent should be good so that is looking fine and now we have this nice cylindrical design as you can see looking pretty good then go into the light property and increase the light intensity to around 130 bring up the light height to 65 and that is looking much better as you can see now let's bring down the position y a little bit so somewhere around maybe around 200 should be good yep and then what i'm going to do is select the t rotation 01 press ctrl d to duplicate it and let's bring that in turn this into a 3d layer press r to bring down the rotation properties and then i can give the z rotation 90 degree movement like so press s to bring down the scale property and let's scale this down to around 50 percent for now all right place it right here then press r to bring down the rotation properties of this and let's rotate the y rotation just a little bit like so that it aligns with our cylinder and then press s to bring down the scale property and increase it make sure to place it below the cylinder layer so it looks something like this and then i can scale this up a little bit like so we need to make sure we align it properly with our cylinder so that is looking much better and now we have something like this but i want this animation to go in the reverse so let's select this jump into that composition go at the very start and get rid of the keyframes from the position create a new keyframe go all the way up to 10 seconds and this time i'm going to move this to the right like so so now we have something like this which looks much better and as you can see our animation is getting cut out right here so to fill this area i'm going to use the cc reptile effect so go into effects and preset type in cc reptile double click to apply that let's increase the expand left like so so now we have this really nice look and then i can also jump into this and then add a tint effect on this text composition so let's add a tint double click to apply that and swap the color so now we have a variation in our typography which is looking very nice now in order to separate it from the background i can press ctrl y to create a new solid called this pg and i'm going to make this kind of a black color like so so it's much more visible for now we can anytime change it later on if we want to all right now when that's done let's rename this layer first of all to cylinder all right this is the top section and now press ctrl d to duplicate it pull this below and call this bottom section all right now select the bottom composition or layer press r to bring down the rotation properties and let's rotate the y rotation like around let's go with something like minus 80 or 85 let's set the rotation y to zero for now and i'm going to place this down like so so we can see what's happening here and then we can rotate the z rotation as well and then i can align this properly i can even switch to transparent mode and see this properly all right that is looking much better press s to bring down the scale property and i think i'll increase the scale oh maybe i'll just leave it at whatever it is and then select the bottom one and expand this from the right like so so now we have something like this which is looking pretty nice as you can see pretty cool and i'm gonna set this to full so we can see what's happening here and then i can jump back to the main top layer and let's give it a different color so this time i'm gonna make this something like a nice yellow and for the black i'm gonna keep it 
kind of an you know not a pitch black basically so that looks much more nicer here and then jump into the cylinder and then go into effects and presets add the tint effect and just swap the colors so there we go looking very very nice now one thing that we need to add here is some shadows in order to create a nice depth so to do that what i'm going to do is select the pen tool and um, first of all let's set this to a gradient color so we can simply click on this fill and uh, select the gradient press ok make sure to select the pen tool and let's also turn on the transparency grid and i'm going to go right here and let's create a shape like so there we go now because we are using a gradient now by default your fill will would be set to a solid color so all you have to do is select the fill and set this to a gradient and then you can go into the contents shape there you will get the gradient fill go into edit gradients and this should be your default gradient here so make sure to select this point this this would be on white so make sure to set this to black and select the opacity and set this to zero so that's that press ok select the start and the end point and i can actually uh, you know move the start and the end point from here i'll set this to half for now i can move the end point as well so i'll move the end point to something like there and there we get some handles whenever we move the start and end point so i can easily do this now so i can pull this here keep this right over here somewhere and then make sure to place this below the cylinder layer so it looks more like a shadow we can simply press t and adjust the opacity in, in case if we don't want it to be that intense but it has a nice subtle shadow as you can see which makes a lot of difference here so i can increase this maybe and then similarly i'll create another shadow at the bottom now i think this is not looking quite right because as you can see the top strip is right over here so i can press ctrl r to bring up the guides i'll drag the guide right over here and try to match this with this guide so i'll select this press s to bring down the scale property increase the scale size and then adjust this like so maybe a little bit like 66 percent there we go that is looking much better now so i can hide the grid press ctrl r and then let's create the shadow for the bottom area select the pen tool and i'll go right here click go right here and click there we go and again then i can jump into first of all place this below the cylinder very important go into contents shape one and select the gradient fill select the start point and i'll just move the points like so just like that so it looks much natural as you can see there we have our really nice typography animation now if i want i can simply change the background color to whichever color that i like so let's go into effects and presets search for a fill effect double click to apply this i can let's try maybe yellow i'm not sure if it, if it would look good yeah i think this looks pretty nice by the way so yeah that is looking pretty nice and there we have a really nice typography animation you can even set this to something like a nice blue color there you have your cool typography animation in after effects so that is how you create a dynamic typography scene in after effects if you want to learn to create more such typography animations then i have a complete tutorial playlist for you that you can watch for free and i will see you guys in the next video till then take care and always stay raw stay creative peace out